And a good midday Thursday afternoon, Roger Hill, Weathering Heights, Velco Weather Hazards Forecaster. This is the Velco Weather Hazards Outlook. We have a shortwave trough, the main cul culprit here with an area of low pressure over Hudson Bay. This continues to kind of push toward us. And it's also going to bring us a shot of a couple waves of showers and thunderstorms that are going to work through on Friday. In the meantime, we have a weak ridge of higher pressure and mostly at surface. That's allowing some pretty fine weather for today, Thursday. We'll see another area of higher pressure. This will be behind the system as it rolls on through. That'll set up basically on Sunday and Monday of next week. It looks like a little bit of uh, triggered shower and thunderstorm activity potentially on Tuesday. And then beyond the period, it looks like another dry period of uh, a couple of days, perhaps maybe going into three days. We'll check that uh, in a second. But first, temperatures uh, are uh, not bad. Uh, we're seeing also lower dew points as we look at that here. And so dew point temperatures have slipped into the 50s, making it feel much more comfortable out there. This shortwave trough again is going to be pushing on east. Let's show you with the latest computer modeling of uh, the GFS as well as the Euro. We have the GFS on the right hand side, the Euro on the left hand side, and uh, this is that disturbance that uh, we're showing with this upper level trough, which basically the jet stream contours. A uh, little bit of ridging higher pressure with pretty fine day, and uh, I would ignore any of these lighter grays. Same thing with the GFS. So basically, we're looking at uh, a pretty decent day that's continuing on this Thursday into Thursday evening. Here we're looking at about uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, and we can see showers and thunderstorms getting ready, knocking on the door of Vermont. This is going to be uh, later overnight tonight. That's going to be the arrival time for Friday uh, in the... Uh, pre-dawn hours or about dawn or so and uh, we're starting to see the shower and thunderstorm activity beginning to push into the region that's going to set up uh, the morning commute tomorrow for uh, potentially a little bit of ponding as some of the showers will be moderate at times and any thunderstorms will be briefly heavy so that continues to affect us on Friday with kind of a first wave it's not very well depicted but there'll be kind of a second wave later in the afternoon and this will be the most intense uh, shower and thunderstorm activity with this area of low pressure kind of weekly spinning. Now, once we get into about 2 o'clock on Saturday morning, most of the areas around Vermont, I believe, will start to dry up. It'll be a little bit of a break in the action. But because of the close proximity of this uh, surface low, 1,004 hectopascal uh, vicinity of about Trois-Rivières, east of Montreal, it looks like uh, it could spin up just enough to cause a few more showers and thunderstorms right along the U.S.-Canadian border, mostly affecting northern Vermont during the uh, morning and into probably the early afternoon, as it looks on Saturday. Uh, rest of uh, Vermont to the south of, say, roughly about the Barry Montpelier area, probably a fairly dry day. And then we get into the day on Sunday. It's our first uh, of two dry days coming, Sunday and Monday, a weak area of higher pressure and control. It's looking pretty good and it looks like basically on Monday we'll start to see basically late in the day a little bit of shower and thunderstorm activity kind of knocking on the door uh, coming in from New York State. That'll set the stage for basically uh, Monday night into Tuesday seeing some scattered shower and thunderstorm activity. Right now it was looking a little bit more uh, volatile, better uh, uh, distribution, but it seems to be scattered out just a little bit for Tuesday. And then beyond that, another area of higher pressure will build in. We'll take any of these dry days we can get. Looks pretty good until backdoor cold front begins to push into the region. That'll happen during the overnight hours, Thursday night into the morning hours on Friday. This is beyond the outlook period. Let's take a look at the GFS Ensemble centered grid on Montpelier. This is the GFS Ensemble, and what we can see here is dry weather up until the time we see uh, basically tonight's business starting to work on in during the overnight period. This is going to max out uh, during the daytime hours on, uh, on Friday, and then start to fall off, but then a little bit of an uptick on Saturday. I would ignore this. I think we're going to see dry weather Sunday into Monday. And then Tuesday, we have a little more shower and thunderstorm activity and another drying out. Looking at the total amount of quantitative precipitation forecast, it's going to be under one inch, uh, the mean anyway. That's the black line here. The most recent model run of the uh, GFS Ensemble is showing it about maybe seven tenths, eight tenths of an inch. And so looking like we're getting a little bit more back to normal with not extreme rainfall, and that's good news there. 
a couple peaks of precipitable water, uh, 1.4 and going anything above one inch. We'll have to watch out for, uh, heavier raindrops. Of course, this times out basically for tomorrow, Friday. And then what we're looking at is a little bit of a drop off and then a, a climb back. And again, a little, a lot of noise in the system. Now, looking at the 850 temperatures, we're going to start to see these temperatures aloft rise. And this is going to set us up way down the road beyond the period. Potentially, maybe some heat indices. Dew point temperatures also make a little bit of a climb. As we look at the 2 meter dew points, you can see that we're fairly dry in the 50s, very comfortable. However, we're going to jump back into the low 60s. A little bit of a dip, it looks like at some point here um, with drier air working along about Sunday and Monday and then we're going to see those dew point temperatures make a slow rise. So once we get the humidity into the region with higher dew points I'm looking at increased capes that's going to be valid on Friday. It looks like Saturday this is Sunday and I eh, wouldn't worry too much about that. Cape over shear uh, looks like this and we're looking at basically under 30 knots of shear if it stays in that mean area. 25 knots, we'll have to watch it. There's a possibility of one or two strong thunderstorms during uh, especially the last wave that works through on Friday during the day tomorrow. And uh, a future heads up will be issued in the morning hours on Friday to cover all of this. Weather Prediction Center, total QPF looks like it's going to be a little more elevated off to the west of us across parts of New York. This is the one inch line, approximately the uh, blue line here. You're looking at about a half inch, a quarter inch, so less precipitation generally in eastern parts of New England. And indeed, that's what our total amount of precipitation is showing as well with the Euro, where things are starting to dry out for eastern New England, still fairly wet across New York. Vermont's going to lie in between. And looking at the two meter temperature anomalies, you can see slightly cooler air advecting into the region. That's good news there. Kind of keeping the lid a little bit more on intense convection. Next five days of high temperatures with the meteorological output statistics show about neutral conditions. Then about three days later, this is about uh, three to seven days out, we start to warm it up a little bit here. And we got Tropical Storm Dawn that's uh, continuing just to kind of lollygag. Latest indications are that it might take a little bit of a track like this. And then we have another separate system. This is more of a Cape Verde type setup. We'll have to watch. This is well down the road. Uh, we're looking at about a 20% chance of tropical cyclone formation over the next seven days. That's it from here. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights. Thanks for watching.